how short this life. That's how one of the Buddha's poems begins. And it goes on to say, even if you have a long life, it's just a hundred years. And that's not much. And it's not like at the end of the hundred years you have all those hundred years that you can leaf through at your leisure and focus on the really nice times. It's gone. As the Thais say, time eats up beings as it eats up itself. And as that reflection goes that we have, that we chant fairly often, aging is normal. As the Thais would translate it, we translate it, we're subject to aging. But it's normal. This is what comes to all of us if we don't die first. And it's a matter of concern not only for people who've been around for a long time, but for anybody. You realize that this body you've got just is going to leave you. It starts going away bit by bit by bit. And the parts that go away don't ask permission. They don't give you any warning on when they're going to leave. So as the John Mahabo used to say, try to squeeze as much goodness out of, out of the body as you can while you have the opportunity. There was a woman who went to see him one time. She was diagnosed with cancer and not given too long to live, and she wanted to meditate with him to get herself ready to die. And he told her, well, I can take care of your mind, but I can't take care of your body. If you're going to come and stay here, you need, you're going to need to bring a doctor. So she had an old doctor friend, a retired doctor, a woman in her 80s, who went along and sat and meditated with her, listened to the Dharma talks together with her. John Mahabu gave about 70, 80 Dharma talks during the three months that they were there. And then after they returned, the woman died several months later. And then her friend, the doctor, realized that she had all these cassette tapes of these really wonderful talks. And she remembered what Ajahn Mahabhu had said. He said, as you're getting older, you want to still squeeze as much goodness as you can out of your body. The image is like squeezing juice out of a fruit. Sometimes you look in a garbage can and you see fruit that's been partially squeezed. And there's still a lot of juice there, but it's been thrown away. You realize what a waste it is. As long as you're going to have to throw the body away, you might as well squeeze all the juice out of it, all the goodness that you can do. So the old woman decided to transcribe the Dharma talks. Her eyesight was failing and she wasn't all that strong. It took her a while. But she managed to transcribe all the talks. Ended up with two huge volumes. And here she was in her 80s, and she could still do that. She was proud of the fact, rightly so. And so as you face the issue of aging, that's what you should think about. You've still got things your body can do. Try to squeeze the goodness out of them. Whatever capabilities you still have left, because you don't know when they're going to leave you. But while you have the opportunity, make the most of it. There are two ways to prepare this way, for this. One is to think in the long term. You can make yourself a Dharma bucket list. They call it bucket list because the things you want to do before you kick the bucket. And for most people, it's experiences you want to have, or places you want to travel to, or basically ways of spending money, getting some fleeting experience and then be able to chalk it up while well, I was able to do that, that, that before I died. But that's pretty insubstantial. You want to think about, instead, what are some of the good things you want to accomplish before you go? What's some good you want to leave behind in the world? And you can think in terms of the, the reflections, because the good you leave behind, behind in the world is also good that you build into your mind the good qualities you develop, generosity, virtue, renunciation, discernment, persistence, endurance, truth, determination, goodwill, equanimity. Which of these qualities is lacking in your mind? See if you can squeeze some of that out of your activities. And then how would you go about developing those qualities? You can develop them in daily life. You can develop them by making up your mind you're going to make a 
special donation or you want to observe the precepts more than you have in the past or meditate more than you have in the past. As a John Fuhrman would call it, he says, leave behind a monument of your goodness. So think of that in terms of the long term. As for day to day, make the most of each day as it comes. The Buddha says, as the sun rises in the morning, remind yourself, this might be the last time you see the sunrise. You could die so easily in the day. And John Lee makes this point. He says, death can, is waiting right around the corner, and it can happen so easily. A slight little accident, a slight miscalculation. Some slight little thing in your body, a little germ gets into the body and then decides to settle in and leave behind lots of, lots of descendants. You never know when it's going to happen. But you do know that you have today. So ask yourself, what qualities in, do I have in the mind that would make it difficult for me to go? Am I ready to go? And the answer usually is, no, I'm not ready. Okay, what's keeping you? What unfinished business do you have? Well, do that. What unskillful qualities in the mind might take over? Well, learn how to fight those unskillful qualities. What are the ones that you tend to give in to very easily? Learn how to fight them. Make that your top priority for the day. I heard of a woman general in the Army or in the States who made a habit every day of making a list of the ten most important things that needed to be done that day, and then crossing through everything except one and two. And focusing on those. Well, maybe you can't make a list of what your unskillful habits are, but to try to have a sense of okay, what needs work, and realize, okay, today is my opportunity to, to do that work. Similarly at night. When the sun sets, you remind yourself, this could be my last sunset. The night is not just for sleeping. It's quiet. It's cooler. It's time to work on the mind. What would get in the way if you had to go in the night? What unfinished business needs to be done? Well, do that. There's another passage where he says, you can make it even more stringent. Each time you breathe in and breathe out, remind yourself, this might be my last breath. What would be a good thing to do with it? Because when the Buddha is talking about being in the present moment, he never says it's because it's a wonderful place to be or because you access a unconditioned awareness just by simply being in the present. He says, you focus on being in the present because there's work to be done, and this is the time to do it. Do today what needs to be done. Because tomorrow, who knows? But you do have this breath, you do have this day. And if you have that list in the back of the mind of the good things you want to accomplish, that can give some guidance to what you want to do right now. So that you can find is what a John Fuhrman called the brightness of life. He once said that that's what he owed to a John Lee, that John Lee showed him the brightness of life. And we talk about sunset years. Well, that's the kind of brightness you want to have in the sunset, the brightness of a mind that's developed good qualities inside, a mind that's found, found something inside that is of real value. Because you look at life as it's normally lived, and everybody has families, and the families grow up, and people tend to go their separate ways. You work on projects, the people work together on the project, they go their separate ways. Sometimes the project gets completed and then gets wiped out. I was riding with my father one time. We'd was visiting him and my brother. We decided to go back to Charlottesville, where 30 years before we had built a house. 
So I drove by to see how, what condition the house was in, and it was in pretty sad condition. The new owners hadn't taken good care of it. On the way back, we dropped my brother off in Richmond, continued driving to Williamsburg. And Dad commented, he said, you know, I have nothing to show for my life. He talked about not only the house, but also the time when he was a farmer. They spent all year growing potatoes, and then word came down from the government, throw the potatoes away. There are too many potatoes on the market. He ended up getting a job with the government, worked on the Water Council. Then a very conservative president came along and abolished the Water Council because it was not business friendly. As he said, there's nothing to show for all that work. So if you're looking in terms of validating yourself in terms of what the world thinks or what you leave behind in the world, sometimes it can be hard. But if you validate yourself in terms of what good qualities you build in the mind, so even though you say you are generous and you're helping the world and somehow that gets wiped out, you've still got the generosity. You've worked hard at being virtuous, doing a good job with your career. And if for some reason what you did and your career gets wiped out, you've still got the virtue. These things don't lead you, they leave you. They're part of your noble treasures. And there are treasures that make life bright. When John Fung was talking about the brightness of life, that's what he was talking about. Not the fact that you can say, well, I traveled here and I traveled there and I tasted this and I had that experience and things that other people put on their bucket lists. Put on your bucket list virtue, generosity, all the perfections. And then with what time you have left and what abilities are remain in the body to squeeze those perfections out of the body. Because you're squeezing out brightness. And it's bright not only for your own mind, but you leave behind a good example. Whoever knows of your life, they see something good, something inspiring. So in your sunset years, as the as the body fades, maybe your memory fades, but still the goodness is is bright. And so even though this may not even get to be a hundred years, still it's a flash of brightness. And it will be a memorial in your mind. Even if your memory goes, there's something deeper in your mind than your memory where these things are maintained.